I wouldn't say I'm boring. <laughs> I'm 40, married, two kids, uh, accounts receivable at an investment firm. Like to watch the cricket. Fond of mustards and chutneys. Huge fan of a good relish. <laughs> uh, my, my wife loves me because I am uh, quote unquote stable and reliable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm a thriller minute. So, um, a person like me isn't the type you'd expect to find hanging out in a gay bar, but there I was. I was checking my phone and sipping a light beer at the bar when a, a man appeared next to me. Excuse me, is this yours? He's holding my wallet. Oh, yeah. Thanks for handing it back. <laughs> you could have drunk all night for free. Well, uh, could I drink for ten minutes for free? Oh, how rude of me. So, I buy the guy a thank you whiskey, and he asks what a guy like me is doing in a place like this. So, I tell him. I was supposed to meet my friend Darren, but he stood me up. And we chat about my job and my family, and my love of early 20th century jazz. <laughs> and he tells me that he's some kind of art dealer. He gives me his card and says we should do this again sometime. Oh, Ian Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> I stayed for a few minutes after he's left, and I finished my third light beer. <laughs> it's only then that I noticed the only female in here is behind the bar. Bloody Darren! <laughs> <laughs> Gabby's asleep, so I do a crossword. Six letters, R something something G something D. Manly men and mountains. Manly men and mountains. My mind wanders over to Ian's Armani suit. Velvet radio voice and unplaceable cologne. That man was so rugged! I put the crossword down and I go to bed. <laughs> A few days later I'm handling an account for an Ian somebody and it makes me think of him. Allowing my impulses to take over, I pull out the card and I dial the number. Hi, Ian, it's uh, Paul. From the bar. I have a free evening. Want to do dinner? At six o'clock, I, I call my wife and I tell her I'm stuck at work. 6.02, I ask myself what the hell I am doing. And it's 6.02 and a half, I get up to walk out just as Ian enters. His face lights up and he steers me to a seat. A buck-toothed teenage waitress approaches to take our order. Ian puts a hand lightly on her arm. We'll take the uh, filet mignon and a pumpkin quiche. Thank you, darling. Would you like me to fix you up right away? The girl falls in love with him right then and there. <laughs> it's all right, mister. You can pay when you're done eating. <laughs> Ian asks a million questions about me, never once breaking eye contact. Well, I ask about him too, but he answers quickly and turns it back to me. <laughs> the women in the room can't stop glancing over at us. Neither can half the men. I'm making them jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I mask a smile. My phone rings and I glance at the screen. I panic for a second. Something wrong? Ian asks. Oh, no, it's, it's just my wife. We go back to our dinner room conversation. <laughs> <laughs> when we're finished, Ian leaves a few coins on the table as a tip and we leave. Paul, what are you doing Saturday? Oh, Saturdays are a nightmare. Kids sport, shopping, taking Gabby to see her father, my turn to cook. Nothing! What time? <laughs> what am I thinking? Gabby is going to kill me! I put out my hand to say goodbye, and he pulls me into a rubbly embrace. I watch him for a full minute as he strides away, almost fainting with embarrassment when he turns back to look at me. <laughs> a few days later, my wife pins me down and tells me to go easy at work. Look, honey, I've just started a critical new project. I'm going to be working extra hard for the next month or so. I'll be on the job on Saturday too. <laughs> Our talk dissolves into an argument and it ends with me telling her she undervalues what I do and her telling me I undervalue the family. Yeah, Saturday can't come round soon enough. <laughs> we meet in the city. Paul, looking good. I have something that you are going to love. Ian, looking devilishly handsome in jeans and a leather jacket, hands me a gift bag. I pull out a jar of Lizzie's homemade mango chutney! <laughs> Amazing! I love this stuff! <laughs> oh, thanks, mate! <laughs> the 
hope goes on a little bit too long. <laughs> oh. <laughs> do you want to do something fun? I tried to cover the growing awkwardness, but <laughs> I'm a married man. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> all the way to a department store. Of all things, Ian starts fishing through the bins. He gets something and says, perfect, follow me. We go into the department store and wind our way to the electronics department. Ian picks up a Blu-ray player and heads straight for the front desk. I am so sorry. I have to return this. Apparently, it's a waste of our hard-earned money. The girl behind the counter looks over at me. Thankfully, my uncomprehending blank face gives nothing away. <laughs> Do you have a receipt, sir? Ian hands her the thing that he fished out of the bins. She pushes a few buttons and hands him money out of the register. Just like that, we walk out of there, $80 richer. Oh, a little speechless at the audacity of his scam. And when we part ways half an hour later, I'm even more speechless as he pushes the money into my trousers. We start seeing each other twice a week. <laughs> Ian seems to be on a mission to take me to every fine dining establishment in town. When we walk, he always has his arm around my shoulder. And, and when we sit, he stares deep into my eyes. Man, has an incredible pull to him. When I'm, I'm with him, I forget that I have a job and a life and a, and a family. <laughs> a few weeks later, we're in a bar and I'm drinking full strength. <laughs> I'm too many. Obviously, because uh, I end up drunk and back at his place. We, we laugh and, and watch a movie, and the next thing I know, I'm in his bed. <laughs> He's wearing nothing but his jocks. Paul, I want to show you something. Ian reaches across me, his naked chest pushing against my shirt. He picks up an envelope and opens it. This is for Gabby. Uh, it's a voucher for a baseball. Drop Gabby off there next Saturday after you take Ben and Sam to soccer, then come straight round here. I tried to slur out the response. Well, what about right now? There is no time like the Crescent. <laughs> Ian smiles. Paul, it's too late. Your wife will kill you if you don't get home right away. I've already called you a taxi. I tried to throw a bit of a tantrum, but he doesn't have a bar of it. Instead, he just hands me two fifties out of his wallet, which I can't help but notice has hundreds of dollars in it. But where did you get all of that from? You had nothing earlier. Back of a truck, Paul. Now, let's wait till and do it right. Drunk and disoriented, I, I stumble into the back of the taxi. I go over. And I pass out on the couch. Gabby is livid when she finds me, and she doesn't talk to me for two days. But I don't care one bit. All I can think about is him, his charisma, his, his piercing gaze, his, his, his chest on my chest. <laughs> I give the wife a voucher as a makeup gift, and she cries and tells me that she loves me and starts blabbering about whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the next three days pass in a blur. And before I know it, I drop the kids off at school, Gabby at the day spa and I'm knocking on Ian's front door. That boyish smile greets me as he ushers me in. Oh, there's candles and why now? Brunch? Ian asks. <laughs> we sit down and he tucks a napkin into my shirt. Don't get yourself dirty now, Paul. My heart is pounding. I know where this is all leading and I'm not afraid to admit I'm afraid. Ian serves salmon and a rocket pear and parmesan salad. <laughs> Five minutes in, he swears. Paul, I am super sorry. I just have to go out and grab something. No, finish your meal and then head straight for the bathroom. I run you a nice relaxing bath. Okay, I'll take your car. Back in 10? Oh, sure. I hand him the keys and he squeezes my shoulder and tells me he'll be right back. <clears throat> I finish my meal. Sit back and <laughs> shrug and go to the bath. I undress and get in. <sighs> Ian is gone for ages. <sighs> I doze off. I wait to the sound of my phone buzzing. <sighs> Reach into my jacket pocket and pull it out. Oh, Gabby, shit. <laughs> Hi, honey. 
She is hysterical. We've been robbed! Terrorists, laptops, jewelry, television, everything's gone! Where the hell are you? Now my heart is really pounding. <laughs> I know exactly where everything is. Oh. It's with Ian. In the back of my BMW, driving out the city, never to return. The bastard was playing the long game. Getting close to me so he could clean me out. The bastard was a con man. I will sort it out. I tie myself dry and then dress quickly. I seen a family portrait on the way out. Ian isn't even pictured. This isn't even his house. I step outside. Make a phone call. Jim. Uh, have you got him? Jim says, yeah. They arrested him two suburbs away. Yes! Put him on! A few seconds later, Ian comes on the phone. Well, Ian, um, that was a pretty impressive effort, but if you'll pardon the boast, not quite as impressive as mine. How did you know where to find me? <laughs> you were driving a stolen cop car and you still can't figure it out. <laughs> Ian is silent for a long moment. <laughs> I, I genuinely liked you, Paul. <laughs> oh, please, spare me. But listen, mate, before I say uh, catch you later, can I let you in on a little secret? Uh, yes. What's that? I fucking hate Chutney! <laughs> <laughs>